everybody and welcome back to my channel. Oppenheimer was just released today on July 21st. It is worth talking about, let me just tell you that, okay? So in this video, we're gonna break it down, we're gonna talk about it, and you're gonna learn my thoughts, if you should go see this movie, if you should skip it, all the above. So I will be doing a spoiler-free portion of this video, so if you're dying to see it and you don't wanna be spoiled, then you can watch this video. But I will warn you if I say anything about spoilers so that you you don't have the movie ruined if you end up wanting to see it or not. With that being said, let's go ahead and get into it. Now I am become death, the destroyer of worlds. So if you guys didn't know, I am a historian. I have my bachelor's degree in history and I do have a focus with US history. So I already knew quite a bit about Oppenheimer. I have studied him since the eighth grade and then I studied him in high school and then I had to do a lot of research on him when I was in university in college and I have the degree to prove it so I feel like I am definitely the person that you should trust the most with this review okay I also absolutely love movies and I cannot get enough of Christopher Nolan movies but that does not mean that I have a bias towards Christopher Nolan okay if there's a movie of his that I don't like I will share it so <laughs> let's just break it down shall we because I did know a lot about Oppenheimer and because I do love Christopher Nolan I was extremely excited for this movie so much so that we were definitely planning on going to see it in its IMAX form which is what Christopher Nolan recommends I had been planning going to see this movie since we heard about it back in what December or whenever they released the first trailer so my expectations for this film were extremely 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 high. I was looking forward to seeing all the Christopher Nolan things like the sound being amazing, the acting being amazing, the script, the visuals, everything. I feel like us as the audience trust Christopher Nolan to always put out a banger of a film and I am a historian so I just was a little bit worried like oh no are they just going to you know Hollywood this film and make it you know something that it's not or are they going to leave out a bunch of different different things and not make it super accurate and I'm not a physicist obviously but I do know that in a lot of movies that has to do with math or physics and all that kind of stuff that sometimes they get it wrong and the math is not there and like they just have you know scratchings on the on the chalkboards or whiteboards behind them and it's never like super accurate but I will say on the history standpoint of this whole film it was so accurate. They had so many details that are very, very important to the story of Oppenheimer, and they really just didn't leave anything out at all. Like, you learned so much, and I was actually very surprised at what direction they were going with this film, because my interpretation from the commercial and the trailers of this film were just going to be about him building the atomic bomb, and him getting together with all these scientists with the atomic bomb, and maybe some things with... The backlash that he got from you know dropping the bomb even though he didn't drop the bomb but whatever same thing you know creating the bomb and I didn't really think that the direction that they were going in it in this film was going to happen so I was very very surprised and I was very pleased to watch the whole thing and I was on the edge of my seat every single second of this film I don't feel like it had a dull moment you know when you're watching biopics and uh, or biopics if you will about you know, people's lives and stuff, or specifically like World War II events, like sometimes things can get a little bit dull or a little bit boring. This was not that. They, Christopher Nolan is an amazing, amazing director and everybody that was a part of this film did such a great job. Like that, there was really nothing that I can say that was like, uh, that wasn't good, that wasn't good. Like everything was just, it was perfect. It was a perfect film. Uh, it deserves all the praise that it's getting it deserves the scores that it's gotten I believe that it probably could have even gotten higher scores on Rotten Tomatoes to be honest and like with all these like critics and stuff like it could have it should have gotten like a hundred percent because it was very very accurate you can tell that a lot a lot of time was spent on making sure that the facts were correct and making sure that all point of views were discussed when they were you know building this film and the story 
storytelling was just immaculate. You know, I, I believe that a lot of history teachers will probably assign this as homework or show clips from this film because it was just, it was perfect. It was just so good, historically speaking. If you are a Christopher Nolan fan, you are going to get everything that Christopher Nolan has offered throughout his entire directing career. It has the time aspect that everybody loves, the sound, the people behind the sound of all of Christopher Nolan's films. They do such an amazing job. They know exactly when to like ramp up the noise and when to be really silent and like really like engage the audience. It was just it was it was just really great. So <laughs> obviously you could tell that I really liked this film and I don't want to spoil anything because I really believe that if you want to see this movie, you need to go in with no spoilers of what's going to happen in this movie. Uh, so I will get into spoilers a little bit later. Uh, I will say that if you are sensitive to loud noises, probably don't go see this movie um, <laughs> or don't see this movie in IMAX or, you know, the... Dolby Atmos or whatever, uh, Cinemark XD, whatever all these big huge theaters have to offer nowadays, I would probably see it in a, like a standard format where the noise won't be nearly as jarring because it, it gets very, very, very loud and so loud that I was like, whoa, and my seat was shaking behind me and it was just, it was so good. It was also a very, very long movie, but it didn't feel extremely long, which is always a plus when you are have gotten to the end of the movie and you're like wow that was time spent well and I don't regret my purchase I don't regret my time being wasted so I think it was just a really good movie that you can't bring your family to but <laughs> you can definitely enjoy with a bunch of adults this is a heavy movie and it's also extremely mature and um, pretty graphic in some some scenes uh, so so as I was saying before with the historical context Yes, it was 100% like very, very historically accurate. They talked about a lot of things that if you study history, then you've already learned about. But if you have not studied history and you don't know the story of Oppenheimer or if you don't know a lot about Oppenheimer, you're going to leave with more knowledge and just trust that Christopher Nolan got it right and that the information there is 100% correct and that you're not getting, you know, this Hollywood glorified version of the story. You're getting stuff that really happened. Like, literally, I, I bet you anything, if we went back in the past, if we had access to a time machine, it would be very, 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 very similar to what we saw. Um, obviously, it, they ramp up a little bit of, of the drama, but I think that whole time period with World War II and building the atomic bomb is very dramatic so I don't think that they even had to really go out on a limb to build up the drama for you know our entertainment and our attention spans <laughs> uh, but yeah this movie is like uh, what three hours long and the the cast is the cast is amazing it is a very very star-studded cast almost every single character is recognizable and a part of me loves seeing that especially when they do such a good job and they're not just like playing themselves you know um, but then uh, I do understand how some people think that when you're making something this big that you should probably give smaller actors a bigger chance you know everybody's going to be seeing these Christopher Nolan films so why not like have actors that are very talented but not as well known you know but I will say that every single person in this film was really good and you can tell that they are where they are with their talents alone. I don't know. I feel like I don't even know how to articulate that correctly. It's just they they did such a great job. You know, Killian Murphy, he is the main character. He is Oppenheimer. He is just he did such a great job. If he does not get an Academy Award for this film. The Academy Awards are rigged. We already know that they are rigged, but like it was so it was just so good. Like he he did such an amazing job that you're you're not seeing Killian Murphy, you know, you're seeing Oppenheimer. The makeup that they do to age him is just it was beautiful. I just know that when the Academy Awards and all the awards start coming in, like they're gonna get a lot, a lot, a lot of deserved 
recognition for this film when it comes to makeup, sound, effects, acting, everything. Emily Blunt is Oppenheimer's wife, Kitty, and she did a really great job. You got really got a feel of how these people really were, you know? And I will say I was a little bit worried having Robert Downey Jr. in this film. Um, he plays Louis Strauss. When I first saw that he was in it, I was like, Ugh, are they just gonna have him be the billionaire playboy philanthropist Tony Stark? Is he gonna be the Sherlock Holmes? You know, this like pompous, very um, eccentric, know-it-all type man. And he was not that. And I think that that was very, very, very good. I love Robert Downey Jr. and I love him as, you know, these awesome characters like Iron Man or like Sherlock Holmes and he he plays those parts extremely well. But I'm glad that they went a different direction and I'm glad that Robert Downey Jr. really embodied this person and you got to see a different side of Robert Downey Jr.'s acting that we haven't seen in a while while also seeing a familiar face, which was great. There's so many different actors in here, like just everyone and like, there were some people as well that we were like that is so random that this person is in this film like Josh Peck when we first saw the trailers we kept making jokes like Oppenheimer where is the atomic bomb and I will say when he showed up on screen I did think about that and I was kind of laughing a little bit and like Alex Wolf is in it as well they they fit the part no matter how small these big actors were playing like a role like it was still it was great to see them like Rami Malek is in it and that was so random too I was like whoa Rami Malek is in this film, okay, and he's has a very, very small part in this film. I think a, a lot of it is Christopher Nolan wants everything to be, like, perfect and amazing, and so how he does that is he casts amazing, amazing actors and amazing people, even if it's for, you know, a short role or a small role, and it's great seeing that, and it, I mean, it really, it really pays off. I don't even know what else to say. Like, it, this man is a god, okay? <laughs> and in one of the the interviews for Oppenheimer Robert Downey Jr. even said like when do you ever go to a movie because of the director you know not because it's a Killian Murphy movie or a Robert Downey Jr. movie but because it's a Christopher Nolan movie you know like we're praising him as the director he deserves all the praise like this movie was just so so good and when I talk about the sound the, the music scores in every Christopher no Nolan movie is fantastic like you know we got the Dark Knight, Interstellar, Inception, like the music is always so good. And then how the sound directors work is fantastic in every single single Christopher Nolan movie too. Like they know when to be really loud and when to be really quiet. It reminded me of Interstellar, like you'll hear like rattling sound all around them talking and like really intense music and then it'll shoot to the outside of space and it's just quiet and you just see like the visuals of like things moving and like all that kind of stuff but it's really really quiet it's not about my life or cooper's life this is about all mankind there is a moment The silence is just as important as the loud, crazy, jarring sounds as well. And obviously, if we're gonna be dealing with the atomic bomb, we're gonna be dealing with a lot of loud, loud noise. And so I was worried, I wasn't worried, but I was just expecting that this film was just going to be very, very loud. Kind of like Tenet, where you're like, oh, this is a lot of, this is a lot of noise. I could barely hear the talking, you know? It shocked me because they were very, very quiet when they needed to be quiet and obviously the the loudness was there like if you have a sensitivity to loudness like don't do not see this movie <laughs> but from here on out I will be talking about spoilers so just go see the movie if you have any sort of like inkling that you should see this movie like go see it or if you have like the slightest bit of interest to see this movie just go see it because it's it's worth it it's worth the money and if you can see it in like the higher res like I IMAX or XD, Dolby, that kind of stuff, go see it in that format as well if you want the full immersive experience. We saw it in one of those higher res type theaters and I don't regret it. And it is a little bit more money, but I, in my opinion, it's worth it. And I would like to know if you saw it in like a standard format, if you felt like the noise was still like amazing and the, the visuals were still amazing. So leave those down in the comments section down below. But I will be talking about spoilers, so 
go ahead and click off or if you don't care about spoilers then keep on watching okay so the spoilers of this film we were just talking about the noise so let's just go ahead and talk about the sound and the sound directing and all that kind of stuff oh it was just so good like i'm like geeking out about this like like it felt like we were there at the test site in new mexico like watching the test bomb go off it was just so amazing and like as as a nerd and as like a film nerd it was visually amazing the storytelling was beautiful and just the 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 sound quality was just out of this world specifically speaking when they dropped the the test bomb in new mexico i was expecting it to be like they dropped the bomb and then just boom loud 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 noise they just decided to be quiet and all you hear is oppenheimer breathing that's it you just hear like his inhales and his exhales and like and then he says his infamous quote now i am become death the destroyer of worlds he's quoting someone else so it's not his quote but it was just silent and you just see the light and you just see the big huge mushroom cloud and then he says his quote then boom the loudest freaking bomb noise ever like it shook the whole theater if you were asleep i don't know how you would sleep through this movie but if you were asleep then you were being woken up by the atomic bomb noise because that was that was so freaking loud and knowing how meticulous christopher nolan is with time and with calculations and historical accuracy i believe that he probably timed out when it would have been quiet to when the bomb noise would have gone out like he was probably like okay how many seconds or how many minutes would it have taken for you to see the speed of light first and then the speed of sound of the bomb how loud would it have been what do we have to do to get there? Like, definitely, I, I bet you anything, it was that calculated. There's no other reason why he would have just had it that long of a delay and then just the instant loud boom. Also, he does three different booms at three different sound qualities because you're seeing three different perspectives. One is the closest viewpoint to the bomb, then there's a middle viewpoint, and then there's the far outpost viewpoint of the bomb drop. When you're at Oppenheimer's, he's the closest, and so I feel like like there's like that time second of him just very quiet breathing just watching the explosion and then the loudest boom and then you get to the middle there's a little bit of quiet and then another boom but it's not nearly as loud and then the third group which has the quietest explosion noise so that was just so freaking awesome i don't know let me know if you thought that was also awesome if you saw that when i was saying that there was things that i wasn't really expecting this show to go into i was not expecting them to really delve back into when Oppenheimer was in school because I thought it was just going to be, you know, Oppenheimer building the bomb and getting the scientists together and building the bomb and then they were going to end it with them showing them dropping it on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. I didn't think that they were going to be doing any backstory on Oppenheimer or talking about maybe they were going to touch a little bit on his life in the you know after the bomb but i didn't think that they were going to make the whole story like parallel to him making the bomb and also him after the aftermath of him making the bomb and how much the people in the government specifically strauss was trying to bring him down and blame him for all of the backlash that happened after we dropped the bombs in japan and i'm very pleased that that was the direction that christopher Nolan went with it because you know we got to see the background of him and how he was this physicist and didn't like math you know and how he got all these groups together and you know communism was a huge thing about it and communism was just huge during that time period so obviously you can't talk about world war ii without talking about communism and i just i really loved that direction i really liked that we got to see these two different points of view and i think it brings that discussion back up with you know was strauss in the wrong was oppenheimer in the wrong who are we to blame for this destruction that happened in Japan? It gives you a positive light on exactly what Oppenheimer was feeling and you really got to that sense of his emotions during him building the bomb, what would happen, his anxieties about the whole operation, as well as his fear of what would happen in the future. All the praise that all the scientists have given him and I think like my perspective 
perspective on it and you know because I know so much about Oppenheimer in American history today we teach that Oppenheimer regretted his decision and that he didn't like what happened with the bomb and and then carrying on to building the hydrogen bomb and all that kind of stuff like we see all this and that's what we we believe as historians and with Strauss you know a lot of people don't believe that he was in the right and that his motives were slimy and that he wasn't really that great of a person and he did Oppenheimer very dirty and I think that this brings to the discussion with like are we sure that his his hatred and his trying to bring down Oppenheimer was fully because he just didn't like Oppenheimer or was it because he thought that it would actually be a benefit for the United States of America like the discussion is up in the air just like with everything with history you know and, and I think they did a really good job at not playing into any bias and because Oppenheimer which what you see in the movie is not really a biased person like he is like well communism like it makes sense in this context in this context and like he read all of the books and stuff and he he knows everything that there is to know about communism but he still doesn't take the sides and he's very very neutral and a lot of people don't understand that while he's and people believe that he's you know a leftist and it was a great way to see the parallels of the past to the present without it being like you know a super political type film because it was still like it's still a biopic you know I don't know you guys like this was just so good and like do not take your children to see this movie <laughs> it was very graphic there's a lot of Florence Pugh in this movie there's a lot of nudity a lot of sex and which you know I don't really care I'm not a prude but don't take your kids is all I'm trying to say one other thing that I absolutely loved about the storytelling with this film. I've noticed a lot of times in film when they're trying to show somebody's like emotion of what's happening, they'll show what happened and then they just kind of tell like the audience like, oh, I didn't, I didn't actually like that. And I, I imagined like what it was like if the bomb went off and my colleagues, you know, getting burnt to a crisp and stuff, but they don't really show it. They just kind of tell you what they were feeling at that time. And I just really loved how they had dropped the bombs everything was done we had heard Truman on the radio saying that they had bombed Japan Oppenheimer goes in and he's you know talking giving the speech and everybody's cheering for him and then you just it's quiet again and then you hear like a blood curdling scream and then you hear the loud thumping the walls behind him are shaking and but then he carries on with his speech and he's still talking and he's still like rallying up everything and so you get these like two sides of the story simultaneously like this is the reality of what was happening while this was the subconscious of what was happening and it they just pieced it together perfectly and they did such a great job and they did that multiple times throughout the film you know you see like the white flash a couple of times you you hear like the banging you hear like the ticking you hear a train you like all these things like that you feel the anxiety from the storytelling and you feel the fear and the remorse and everything it was just so it was just so good you guys I don't know like I don't even I don't even know what else to say at this point like it was just it was just such a good movie and I have seen quite a few good movies recently and this one it, it will deserve everything that it's gotten and as a Christopher Nolan film it was a great great Christopher Nolan film and it was a nice way to see um, him kind of take a step away from the like fantasy type sci-fi type stuff Stuff. And I know like it was kind of similar with like Dunkirk, you know, like he does historical films, but he also does these fantastical type interstellar inception type films that would never really happen not at least in our lifetime I just think if we really want other super big historical period films we got to get Christopher Nolan in charge of all of them and he's got to do all of them he's got a film I don't want to see a biopic and I don't want to see a historical film unless it's made by Christopher Nolan Christopher Nolan is definitely 
a great, a great, gr amazing director. Everybody that he hires or everybody that works with him, I feel like they also deserve the recognition because I don't think he's sitting in the sound booth, you know, like doing everything and making sure the sound's working. You know, he's not doing that. So like the recognition needs to go to everybody, everybody involved in this film down to the extras, you know, like just, it was great. It was a great film. So I would love to know your guys' thoughts on this film and what your opinions are on this film. Uh, like I said before, if you liked it, let me know why you liked it. If you didn't like it, I do want to know why you didn't like it because that intrigues me. Like, how could you not have liked this film? And if I forgot anything and you wish I would have pointed this out, please leave it down below and we'll have a really good discussion going on. So thank you so much for watching. Go see this movie and I'll see you next time. Bye.